If you get this calculation wrong with your insulin, you die. If you get it right, you thrive. And oftentimes it feels like you don't even have diabetes in the first place. See, what I'm gonna share with you today is how I was able to consume about five days worth of carbs without additional insulin in one sitting, and how I did so with non-diabetic numbers. Now, I don't want you to think that you have to do that or that you should do that, but the key here is to understand that if you think differently and use this counterintuitive method that I'm gonna share with you, not only can you better prevent yourself from encountering visits in the hospital, but also how you can set yourself up for a truly thriving life with blood sugars in control. So if you don't know who I am, my name is Matt Vandevecht. I am a certified master fitness trainer and nutritionist. I live with type 1 diabetes. And if you're wondering why I should even be talking about this, I'm also an Ironman athlete who maintains above a 90% time and range with my blood sugars. Now you don't have to be an athlete and you don't have to be anything really to use today's strategies. In fact, what I want to share with you is for the average person to do whatever they want to enjoy life while living with diabetes. So uh, stick with me, I've got an interesting story for you that just might blow your mind. I do wanna share with you how to live your best life in the process that is surprisingly easy. Let's jump in. Now, what I wanna share with you most importantly today is that this is not medical advice, but it's also probably gonna be better than the medical advice you have been given. Bold statement, I know, but let's dive into the story and you tell me if this is crazier than you initially anticipated. So, uh, yesterday, I did a 100 mile bike ride. I know, <clears throat> we're starting off pretty crazy. I am sick as well, and I was sick before I started the bike ride, so it probably wasn't the best idea uh, as far as you know overall health. But I decided to go for it because I had 70 miles on the calendar from my coach. So I'm training for a 100 mile bike ride right now, and I was feeling good. Uh, you know, I got to 70 miles and was like, another 30, I can do it. <laughs> and so I shot for it and, and we did it. Now that being said, I think my trainer, you see my bike right behind me, it might be a little bit broken because there's no way I did 100 miles in four hours and 10 minutes. That's, that's assuming I was riding faster than 25 miles. That's, that's pretty darn quick, right? Uh, that being said, I know I hit at least 80 or 90 miles based on my power output and all the, the details from my watch and my trainer and all that kind of stuff. So still an impressive ride and I feel good about it. Now, what might shock you is that as a type one diabetic, of course, I have to manage blood sugars intensely. And during this ride, I calculated a pretty high need for carbohydrates. And uh, usually it's like, okay, calculation, answer, just do it, it makes sense. But for this ride, the number shocked me. And I almost didn't believe it, but I decided to stick to it and we'll see what happens. Now what I wanna show you is not something I typically recommend other people to try. It's a very specific topic, but during this century ride, I consumed 437 grams of carbohydrates while maintaining non-diabetic blood glucose levels. Now that might sound insane and that's because it is, but my blood sugars averaged in the 90s and low 100s for the entire ride. I think the highest I went was like 135 or something, which is pretty stellar, right? But 437 grams of carbohydrate, that is insane, right? Now, caveat here is I made zero basal rate adjustments, so my insulin pump was just pumping as if it were a normal day, right? And so I wanted to eat food, that was the goal, because if you ride uh, even 90 miles, you need a lot of food to make up for all the energy that you're burning, which we're gonna get to in a second, because that comes into play for how you calculate these, these needs, right? To keep blood sugar stable and in a non-diabetic range, but when I was planning this all out, I needed to know how many carbs I was going to be consuming, uh, but I also wanted to consume more than the initial calculation allowed. So I did end up giving insulin at the beginning of my bike ride, which sounds crazy, but it's part of the strategy, okay? And I'm, I'm very good at this. I experiment with blood sugars. I coach on this. I teach other type ones how to manipulate blood sugars intentionally. We call them blood sugar formulas, okay? Now, what I want to share with you do not copy this. This is this could be very dangerous. Okay, I am an expert on this topic. So I gave insulin for 23 carbohydrates. And I want you to think about that for a second. I dosed insulin for 23 carbs and then consumed an additional 414 carbs without additional insulin. <laughs> right? so that is just insanity when you really stop to think about it. I dosed for 23 carbs 
Okay, for me, that was, I think, 1.53 units, about a 1 to 15 ratio, right? Uh, which, that do not compare yourself to that. That's just what my body needs. You're different, probably, okay? 414 grams of carbs that were uncovered by fast-acting insulin. Now, a couple of things to this before you think, you know, this is not the episode for me. I want you to stick through this. Just bear down because it's going to make sense in just a second. Now, when exercising with insulin on board, there's a couple of things at play here, right? Number one is that exercise, exercise expedites your insulin that is on board. So if you've taken insulin recently and then you exercise, the exercise often will make the insulin work faster and it'll be more efficient at what it does, right? The insulin goes further than it typically does. So what that means is that if I'm taking insulin in the middle of exercise, which I was, it impacts your actual insulin sensitivity, right? So uh, your insulin to carb ratio, which is what I was talking about, my one to 15, instead of a one to 15, and I'm not gonna go through all the math right now, but let's just give an egregious example. It's like one to 100, right? Where if I take a unit, I get 100 carbs instead of just 15. Very different when exercising. And this is a great example. Uh, actually, I'm pulling this example from my book. So it was a, uh, if you have this, the blood sugar freedom formula, page 91, which is chapter six, we get into balancing and manipulating blood sugars, okay? So that is the chapter I want you to reference in your books. Uh, if you don't have it yet, the blood sugar freedom formula, obviously. But in this, this principle, I want you to understand that when you introduce a new variable, like exercise to insulin, your insulin needs change. And if you're not ready for that, if I wasn't ready for that, I would have ended up in the hospital, right? Because if I dosed for 23 carbs, thinking I was only going to consume 23 carbs, but I needed 437 carbs, I'd be dead. Let's be real. I would not have made it out of that workout. I would have collapsed on the floor if I wasn't prepared for that, because that is an enormous amount of carbohydrates. Now, I planned that uh, well, I planned for maybe 400 of those, not 437. I had to stop for a second and make sure I had enough around me <laughs> to finish the ride because I wasn't planning on going up to 100 miles. But the point is, if you're not ready to anticipate changes in your insulin sensitivity based on other factors, by the way, exercise is not the only one. That's just one of the examples we give in this book. Uh, then you are wildly unprepared for life with diabetes, which means you may end up in the hospital or worse, right? So being able to anticipate these things or calculate them, which is, it's not a fun word, I get that, but that's what it is, right? Being able to predict your changes in insulin sensitivity, understanding how things might look different in different scenarios. If I'm dosing for lunch in a work meeting and I'm super stressed out, that's gonna be a different ratio. I'm probably gonna need more insulin. Right? If I am exercising, prime example, I need less insulin. Right? If I am uh, just waking up versus going to bed, my insulin needs are very different. So understanding the underlying impacts of insulin resistance and insulin sensitivity. In fact, that I believe was chapter seven in the blood sugar freedom formula, if you wanna read along. Uh, and actually, if these concepts are interesting to you, just as a side note, we're actually doing a live read along with this book. So if you already have this book, just know that when you activate your bonuses, you'll be invited to do a free read along, I almost called it a ride along, <laughs> like when I used to do ride alongs as a firefighter EMT, uh, read along, you will be able to follow through, but also ask questions to me, the author, as we're going through it. And if you're watching this and it's like a year later, these are all going to be archived and available as replays to anyone who ever buys this book. So if you've already got it, sign up for that. It's free. Just register for it with the bonus QR code in the book. Uh, and if you haven't got it yet, go grab it because we're starting it up pretty quick. So the idea behind what I'm teaching you today is how you have to think differently. You have to be able to pivot when the situation itself changes. Your insulin needs literally change day to day. They do not remain the same. So yesterday I took what was that 1.5 units right ended up eating 437 grams of carbs today very different bike ride instead of four hours and 10 minutes it was 30 minutes right because it's a recovery ride i'm very tired uh but i didn't take any insulin and still had to have some carbs i think i ended up having like 
30 or 35. So it very different, but I still needed carbs, right? Now, I told you in the beginning, I was going to share with you the concepts of what we're considering with these blood sugar management strategies, right? So when I delivered insulin, of course, I need to match that insulin with carbohydrates and the additional insulin sensitivity from the exercise. So I have to consider the insulin as a standalone. But what helps us to identify these factors is to separate or isolate them as we think about the impacts on blood sugars. So secondary to the insulin given is the impact from the exercise itself. See, within exercise, I burn glucose for energy, right? Which is why I want to consume glucose as an ultra endurance athlete. Even if you're not an ultra endurance athlete though, just go for a walk, right? You might drop with your blood sugar, so you might want to consider taking a snack with you just in case. So the exercise itself burns glucose, but the exercise will also develop more insulin sensitivity in your body. So there's three different things we're considering just from one activity, right? So if I've got increased insulin sensitivity, the rest of the day after a hundred mile ride, I'm crazy insulin sensitive. So I had to snack all day long and I say had to, yeah, I got to snack, right? I love that part because it feels like I'm not diabetic anymore. I'm just like, I'm going to eat lunch. And then I, I take like half a unit for a full lunch. It's wild. Uh, but there's multiple considerations for every decision that we make. Now, of course, and I'll bring this up again. The subtitle of the book is type one diabetes simplified. So it sounds like a lot at first as does anything that's new, right? When you're first diagnosed with type one, at least for me, I was crazy stressed out. In fact, I was so overwhelmed, I stopped trying. <laughs> I was like, you know what? I'll take insulin sometimes, maybe, but this is just too much. I don't want to deal with it. You know, I did not take care of myself, like hardly at all. Uh, stopped testing my blood sugars for a while too. That was, I was not in a good headspace. But there's hope through understanding. Right, so when you understand the underlying impacts of our decisions, so like last night, I didn't sleep very well because I'm sick, right? So not sleeping well increases cortisol, increases insulin resistance, means blood sugars run higher and I need more insulin for that. Okay, check. What else? Well, I'm also sick, right? <laughs> and so being sick can also lead to higher blood sugars and more insulin. Got it. Okay. Well, what about how I can go for a 30 minute bike ride at a low level intensity just to get the blood pumping? Increase of insulin sensitivity, right? So increase of insulin sensitivity can balance out to a certain extent some of the increases of insulin resistance. Now, I'm going to zoom out because I know this is getting a little bit sciencey, which I love, but I know not everyone loves. So big picture concept here is that we have to understand what's going to make our blood sugars run higher and what's going to make our blood sugars run lower. And if you like the idea of getting more precision and specificity behind those numbers, that's what I do. Right. And I love being able to calculate. I need 437 grams of carbs for this workout. Not 420, not 450, 437 carbs, right? Because to me, and this might not resonate with everyone, but for me, I, I found that many years ago when I was very fearful and anxious, I'll be real with you guys, I was very anxious about low blood sugars, uh, about diabetes in general, about complications from high blood sugars. I realized that my fears, my anxiety came from uncertainty where I was like, I, I'm just scared because I don't know what's going to happen for sure. Right. It wasn't like I didn't have hope. It was just that I didn't know if I would eat a meal and it would, it would work. Right. I'd be like, oh, is it going to go high? Is it going to go low? I don't know. And so I would always be babysitting my blood sugars. I'm going to go for a jog. Is it going to drop super low? Or am I going to go high? I don't fully know. And that was the root of my anxiety, of my fear, of my lack of peace of mind, right? And so I solved for peace of mind, which meant I needed certainty, which meant I needed to figure out my blood sugars. And this is the root of today's episode, really where I, where I wanted to take this. So I told you, you don't have to be an Ironman training for this stuff for it to work, right? The counterintuitive methods are that blood sugar formulas are what you need in order to see a higher quality of life, but there's different formulas for everyone. 
How does that make sense, right? There are specific predictive formula methods, and that's what I use for my stuff, right? But there are other basic generalized formulas that apply to literally everyone, and this is how we can guarantee 90% or higher time and range for those who read the book, go through the resources, and actually use the information, right? That's how it's possible, because generic blood sugar formulas apply to all, and then from there, you build on top of your own formulas for what's important to you, right? So for me right now, ultra endurance athletics. <laughs> Never thought that I would be into that, but I am. So I had to optimize my blood sugar formulas for ultra endurance athletics. And they changed a lot of stuff. Some of you are looking at optimizing for other things like spontaneity with the grandkids, right? You're like, I just wanna be able to play with the grandkids and not have an urgent low. Um, I just want to be able to go out to dinner with my Italian family and have pasta or pizza and not go sky high, right? Like my wife, her, her whole family is Italian. And so that's, <laughs> that was something I had to figure out real quick. So understanding that blood sugar formulas are not this one size fits all. They have to be personalized. Now you start with your base in the book, the blood sugar freedom formula. Obviously I go through that in the first couple of chapters, you talk about your foundational formulas and how to build those out. And those, like I said, 90% time and range, like it's nothing. I mean, imagine if your blood sugars just cooperated as a default, right? Now, what I want you to think about though, is once your blood sugars are sitting at 80%, 90% or higher, time and range. When your A1Cs come down and things look good on paper, what's the next step for you? What do you optimize for once blood sugars are controlled? What area of life do you have the most uncertainty? So for you, that might be meals. It might be overnights. It might be family events. It might be potlucks where there's no carb counts. Maybe it is athletics. Maybe you just want to work out again, lose some weight, right? Whatever it is, you have to decide what you want to optimize for and build on top of those foundational formulas with your optimal blood sugar formula. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Uh, and like I said earlier, since you already probably have the book, since you've been following for a while, or if you don't yet, the Blood Sugar Freedom Formula, we're doing a live read along event with me, the author. This is not something I'm ever gonna do again, but I wanted to gift this, uh, my time, my resources, my expertise to everybody who supported this journey because I want you to have all of the answers that are gonna give you true success with your blood sugars to help you to establish not only those foundational formulas to establish control, but truly to optimize your blood sugar formulas so that you can thrive with your diabetes. So. If that's something you're interested in, uh, we'll drop a link in the description for all of you who have already got the book. If you don't have it yet, just go get it. Uh, you can grab it on Amazon and that will enable you to, to take part in it for free as well. It's totally going to be the best thing ever. <laughs> I can't wait because uh, we're going to be sharing some new concepts as well that we've added to our clients trainings, but obviously you can't add it to a book that's already been published. So cannot wait to go over those with you guys as well. So hop in join that it's going to be a blast and really do think about once your blood sugars are that controlled what do you want to optimize for what's truly important to you where in your life would it make the most sense to master your blood sugars so that you can focus on what's truly important to you i hope that helps have a great rest of your day i'll see you in the training and keep up the fight